Hello, I'm Zed Survivor. Getting injured or wounded in Project Zombo is a common occurrence. You will have to apply first aid to heal yourself. This could be bandages, splints, or even stitching yourself up. There are a few different injuries and we will go through them. Scratches are the most basic wounds. You can get these from glass, zombies, woods, PvP, digging with bare hands, and so on. If a zombie scratches you, you have 7% chance of getting the zombie infection. To heal these, all you need is a bandage. There are many different bandages, and they have their own stats and life. A bandage will get dirty over time, which depends on wound severity. If life of a bandage drops to zero, it will get dirty. A dirty bandage will slow down the healing and may cause infection. You can disinfect the bandage, making it less likely to cause infection, and disinfect wounds which will lower the chance of the infection or treat it. The best disinfection is alcohol wipes or cotton balls doused in alcohol versus bourbon. You can use bourbon and cotton balls to craft the cotton balls doused in alcohol. It has four disinfectant power while bourbon itself only has two. Wounds like this will heal over time either way but cleaning wounds and taking care of yourself will speed up the process. To prevent scratches you could make armor, don't jump through broken windows, and don't break glass with your bare hands. Dig furrow with a shovel and not with your hands. Don't get into altercation with other players. And go around trees instead of through them. Don't sprint vault fences, and don't sprint into trees. Lacerations are the same as scratches, but more severe. Their bleeding is more powerful and wound lasts longer. So disinfecting it and keeping it clean is more important here than regular scratches. Lacerations mostly happen through zombies, they have 25% of zombie infection. To prevent these injuries, you can wear armor and be more careful fighting zombies. Deep wounds are even more severe. They can happen through glass, falling off of high places, and getting shot or hit with a powerful melee weapon. To treat these wounds, you will first need to remove the foreign item from the wound. This might be glass or a bullet. You can do this with tweezers, such as your needle holder, or your hands. I would advise you not to remove it by hands, instead bandage it and find medical supplies to do that. After you remove the foreign item, you will be left with just a deep wound. It could be bandaged, but that won't do much because the bandage will get dirty really quickly and this will only lead to infection. A deep wound cannot heal with only bandages. Bleeding will stop, but it won't fully heal. You will need to find a suture needle or needle and thread. If you stitch a wound, you will have to wait, disinfect the wound and bandage it to prevent infection. Don't remove stitches prematurely. After you waited a few days, you can try removing the stitches and you might be welcomed with only a scratch. You can treat it like you normally treat a scratch. To prevent these injuries, you can wear shoes and not step on broken glass, don't break windows with your bare hands, and don't go through broken windows. Don't jump from high places and don't be heavy loaded if you really have to, because that will cause more chance of wounds and higher health loss. Don't get into PvP altercations, but if you have no other choice, wear bulletproof body armor. Fractures can happen through car accidents, falling off of high places, and getting hit by blunt weapons. A limb fracture will have to be healed through splints and bandaging it afterwards. Other fractures will only have to be bandaged. A fracture is a serious injury and it will really hinder your ability to move and fight. Make sure to stay home and rest. You won't really know when your bone has healed, you will have to wait a while. Well, it depends what bone got fractured. Legs take a lot to heal and over time you will move faster which will signal the fracture is starting to heal. After a longer period you will be able to move almost as fast as you normally would. This could possibly mean that you healed. You could try removing the splint. If it didn't heal, put the splint back and keep waiting. This won't reset the fracture heal time, just make sure to not to remove it too often. To prevent fractures, you will have to drive more carefully, don't jump from high places, and also don't have heavy load when doing it. Stay out of PvP altercations. Burns are wounds that happen through fire. A burn is similar to a laceration. It can happen on any body part and will have to be cleaned every once in a while. You can do this with any clean bandage. You should clean a burn and change bandages when it gets dirty. It will take some time 
to heal. To prevent these burns, don't play with fire. Because you don't only take damage from fire, you might get set on fire and then you must react quickly or you will burn to death in a small amount of time. You can extinguish a fire with a fire extinguisher or water. Bites are wounds that happen from zombies. Do not panic. Well, actually do, because you are dead. Bites have 100% chance of infecting you with zombie infection. You will get sick and stressed, you will lose health and turn into a zombie. To treat it, you can bandage it, clean it. It behaves like a regular wound, but is more prone of infection and takes more time to heal. The only way for it to heal would be if you turned off the infection mortality in the sandbox menu. To prevent bites, wear armor and have more careful approach when dealing with zombies. You can also get injured with no wounds whatsoever, or after wounds heal, you might be left with low health. This is still really serious. If your health drops to critical, even without any debuffs, you might still lose health and die. This might happen from PvP altercations, dropping from high places, car crashes, or high number of wounds that heal and leave you in a critical state. To treat these injuries, you must eat food and eat a lot of food, sleep or take sleeping pills to be able to sleep. Food and sleep will buff your heal time, and this sometimes is the only way to recover from this critical state. Sickness. There are two types of sickness, cold or nausea. Both have four stages. A cold can happen from being wet and cold for prolonged periods. You will cough and sneeze, causing noise and attracting zombies. You can use toilet paper or tissues to muffle them. To treat the cold, stay inside, eat good food and wear warm clothing. To prevent this, wear warm clothing, stay out of the rain and keep yourself warm with a campfire in really cold months. Nausea sickness is the same sickness you get when you're zombified. If you had no contact with the zombies and you're sure that it's not that, then there are a few things that can cause it. Standing close to a lot of corpses will make you sick, so if you see this effect, move away from them because it can get worse and worse. Eating poisonous mushrooms and berries, drinking bleach or drinking tainted water will also cause this and it will kill you. Eating rotten food will also get you sick, but it is survivable. To treat this, sleep and eat lots of food. Vitamins won't help you with sickness, they are used to decrease sleepiness. There are a few other medical supplies we haven't covered. These are poultices. They can be found through foraging. To make poultices, you will need mortar and pestle, which is crafted with a plank and saw. All of them have their own benefits and can be used to treat injuries. There is medicine like painkillers that treat pain, beta blockers that prevent panic, antidepressants that will treat and reduce unhappiness over time, sleeping tablets that will increase tiredness, and vitamins that will reduce tiredness. Antibiotics are a medicine that will weaken the wound infections. Use them when you have multiple wounds that cannot be cleaned so often. If another player gets injured, you can right click on him and medical check him. You will get access to his health panel and you can treat his injuries from there. You can easily craft bandages by removing curtains and ripping the sheet you get. You can cook water and sterilize rags and bandages without using up disinfectant. Leg wounds will cause you to limp and arm wounds will cause major decrease in hit speed. Adhesive bandages will disappear after you remove them if they got dirty and they have lower health than ripped sheets. First aid is also a skill that you can level. Leveling it will increase bandage life, making it more durable, and splints will help you be more mobile and heal fractures faster. First aid is not a needed skill, it's more of a quality of life and it's far from a skill that saves lives. To level it, all you have to do is treat yourself or other players. Bandaging and removing dirty bandages will give you XP, but you cannot exploit this by bandaging and removing that bandage. You will have to wait so it's dirty. Reading a book will help you a lot. You can get easy wounds by walking through broken windows or you can go crazy and step on broken glass barefoot. Make sure you're safe while leveling first aid. And in my opinion, you shouldn't care too much about this skill because it's not so important. There are a few traits and occupations you can take to get the first aid. Doctor, nurse, former scout and first aider. 
And now it's time for the tip of the video. There are critical body parts that if wounded will cause massive bleeding that might kill you, like neck for example. Getting a scratch or a laceration on it could cause you to bleed out in 30 seconds, so make sure to bandage it right away. Thank you all for watching, hope you learned something new. 28 Days Later Episode 4 will come out soon. Thank you all for your support, I hope you enjoyed the content and I will see you in my next video.